Hi, my name is Carlos Gutierrez. I'm the executive director of Cinema Tropical, and um, I want to welcome you to this to the launch of this um, film and commercial series, Mexico on the Hudson, celebrating uh, the legacy, celebrating the vitality of the Mexican community in New York City through cinema. And Mexico on the Hudson is presented by the CUNY Mexican Studies Institute and Cinema Tropical. And also want to thank our, um, our co-presenters, the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies, CLAX, at New York University, and Celebrate Mexico Now. And, um, and before I introduce our special uh, panelists, I want to um, welcome uh, and introduce uh, Jose Guerra Lopez, the director of the Mexican Studies, the Mexican Studies Institute at CUNY, who's uh, um, going to talk a little bit. Jose, thank you so much. Thank you, Carlos. And again, hello, my name is Jose Guerra Lopez. I'm the director of the Mexican Studies Institute at the City University of New York. And for those who don't know us yet, the Mexican Studies Institute is part of the entire university system, which has 25 campuses, and our institute is housed at Lehman College in the Bronx. Our mission is to boost enrollment of Mexican and Mexican-American students, foster research with and about Mexico and Mexicans in the U.S., and collaborate with community-based and nonprofit organizations to support and empower the Mexican immigrant community through education, providing personalized educational services, presenting free cultural events, making efforts to revitalize indigenous languages, and documenting our community's contributions in New York. Today, we are delighted to present this film and conversation series with Cinema Tropical, and not only that not only celebrates the representation of the Mexican community in film, but humanizes the immigrant experience. As we continue to tell our stories, I am optimistic that we will see more diversity on screen and behind the camera. Now we are so fortunate to have as our host and moderator for this evening, Carlos Gutierrez, Executive Director of Cinema Tropical, who will now introduce our distinguished panelists. Carlos. Gracias, Jose. And um, just to contextualize a little bit, uh, we, uh, Jose and I, we've been talking about this series um, it's very interesting about what's been happening in the past few years. There's been a, uh, sort of a, a growing number of, 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 of films, both made by Americans and Mexicans, on the Mexican community in, in New York. Uh, more recently, uh, um, you might have um, seen um, Fernando Frias, uh, I'm No Longer Here, uh, Ya No Soy Aquí, uh, which is streaming on Netflix, as well as um, Son of Monarchs, Hijo de Monarcas by Alexis, Alexis Gambis, which was uh, won a, a prize at Sundance. It's going to be um, released later this year. And also the upcoming I Carry You With Me, The Llevo Conmigo by Heidi Ewing, which also, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting mixture of um, fiction and nonfiction um, and representing the, the, the lives of um, two, um, two, Mexican, um, two Mexican people here in New York, um, which actually is, open, is opening uh, on, on Friday, June 25th um, in, in theaters um, across the country. So there was like this fortunate combination of, um, of new films, plus um, some additional films that have, um, have premiered in the past few years. So we decided to kind of celebrate the Mexican community and, and the different representations. We thought it was a great opportunity to talk about precisely about those representations um, and, 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 and more so 2021 as, as the city is reactivating, I think it's a great opportunity to, to bring back to the center um, the Mexican community, which has exploded in the past um, 20, 20 years. Um, and just before I introduce our special guest, I uh, just want to remind everybody, uh, we're, so, we're screening as part of the series, um, three films, La Ciudad, uh, by David Riker from 1998, which actually, um, it's, it's, it's perhaps the first film that uh, actually depicted the Mexican, the Mexican community back when it was um, exploding. And we're also screening En el Septimo Día, 2018, by Jim McKay, which we're going to be talking about it. And I'm leaving now, um, Ya Me Voy, by Lindsay Cordero and Armando Croda, who are also our special guests. Um, well, since I already mentioned them, um, we have with us um, the creative directorial duo of Lindsay Cordero and Armando Croda. They, they have both directed the 2013 documentary film Firmes, Mexicans in the Bronx, and the 2018 documentary film I'm Leaving Now. Additionally, Cordero has worked as producer of the feature film in El Septimo Día, and she has worked in numerous other productions. And Armando has also worked as a, um, as a film editor, and he directed the 2008 film, Victorio. Armando, Lindsay, welcome. Uh, we also have with us Luis Bernardo Quesada, who's a PhD candidate in Latin American, Iberian, Latino cultures at the Graduate Center at CUNY. He studied sociology at the Universidad de Guadalajara and a master's degree in language science sciences at the Escuela Nacional 
de Antropología e Historia en Mexico City. He currently teaches linguistic anthropology at Queens College, CUNY, and he actually wrote um, a text on our series, so we're going to hear his, uh, his, his, takes, his take on, uh, on these films that we're presenting. And also, it's a great pleasure to have, uh, to have with us uh, General Ramirez, uh, who made his acting debut in the film in El Septimo Día in the role of Artemio. He had a breakthrough performance, and uh, he's also here um, uh, to talk with us about his experience working in the film. Um, just a disclaimer, uh, we, we had uh, also other guests, but everybody's very busy. Um, cinematographer Alejandro Mejia, uh, filmmakers Fernando Frias, and the Cordo and Bernardo Ruiz, uh, um, they, were, they all wanted to participate, but they were uh, shooting, in, um, shooting new films and new work. So um, we, I mean, uh, on one hand, we were very happy that, uh, that the, Mexican, the Mexican filmmakers are, are keeping themselves busy. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody. ¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes. Luis, Daniel. Hello, buenas tardes. Hi. Uh, let's start with Luis. Uh, Luis, can you tell us uh, a little bit about um, about this text that uh, you wrote about the, about the programming and that we're going to be um, uh, premiering uh, this week in our sites? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you, um, Armando, Lindsay. I want to say first, thank you for this invitation, Carlos, and congratulations for the 20th anniversary of Cinema Tropical. Thank you very much also for uh, to Jose Guerra of the Mexican Studies Institute. And um, well, um, to start with the discussion based on the text that I wrote, um, some ideas that, have, uh, um, that I want to set on the table for you here to discuss. Um, is, um, of course, a disclaimer too, as uh, Carlos was saying, I am not a specialist on cinematographic studies. I don't, I'm not a specialist in, in film, but what I've been uh, working on the, the last uh, years as a researcher and uh, as a professor, uh, my area of, um, of interest is more like discourse studies overall and the study of public and um, political discourses too. So, um, I'm saying this because I have to share with you what was uh, the method that I used to approach these um, movies, right? La Ciudad and El Septimo Día and um, 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 uh, I'm leading now. And uh, so um, um, the ideas that, uh, that come while I was approaching this um, as a corpus, right, as a corpus of non materials that we normally in, um, in the discourse studies take uh, to make uh, an, a political, social, and uh, economical analysis, of course. And then, well, a little bit of um, context, right, to, to, uh, to inform these movies, to inform these cultural products. Um, based, uh, as also was mentioned by Carlos, on the 20 years, um, on the late 20 years, the last 20 years in which we have testified um, very important increase of the Mexican population within the, the New York City, um, especially, right? Um, also, um, want to make some claims about how these movies are participating into this uh, overall broad context, social context, and um, basically um, ask you some questions, uh, especially to Lindsay, uh, Lindsay and Armando. Um, because of course, uh, as I was coming up to read, you can, you can think on what I did as a reading, right? a, close, a close reading of the materials that I watch. And, um, and of course, I have uh, some uh, reactions, right? There are some, uh, there are some um, um, interpretations that may be accurate and that, that may not be accurate at all, right? So I want to um, um, ask you some uh, specific um, issues on, on your production process, right? On your, and, and, and even before, right? Your, in, uh, the process in which you started thinking about these projects too. Um, so um, this method allows me to do this kind of uh, procedure because it's, of course, um, uh, there are some similarities between the materials, not only with these three movies, but with some others that are also around and uh, such as some of the ones that, are, that Carlos already mentioned too. Uh, Blood of my blood, Nomadas, I carry you with me, don't let me drown, etc. 
And um, I, I couldn't avoid but interpreted them as um, on the political level, first on a global level, and then on a local, that is the US political level, right? In, in first, um, I want just to um, leave on the table again the idea that many, especially many of the minority groups that um, the minority fights for uh, fights for minority groups, sorry, that have been um, um, raised in the late years, um, we can say, or we can observe that are the result of an exportation of a, of a, of a globalization of political process. You no, know, if we look at the Black Lives uh, uh, Matter movement, for instance, we can see um, replications of the same um, reactions, right? Social reactions in other parts of the world. So, to what extent will be this uh, uh, one of the questions, or right? to what extent? Your work is um, dialoguing or, or, you know, or in a conversation with these global um, discourses that have globalized politics, right? We see um, that the BLM movement was um, um, taken or was, was uh, find some, found, found some, some expressions in uh, South Korea, for instance or in, um, in Europe too, right? In the, um, and even in Nigeria, also in, in Africa, right? So it's kind of a fashionable thing to do, right? To, uh, to fight for this global process, right? And I don't know why, I just, just want to know what you think uh, on that, based on that. Um, and now coming from the other political side of the issue, if we focus our attention in what is happening in the US, I couldn't avoid to observe um, the link or I couldn't avoid to do the link between um, your, um, your, your, um, your films, your movies, and this other group of films that I have mentioned too. And um, as a part of a political reaction um, for, for the discourses that were activated very discriminatory, very dangerous uh, discriminatory discourses that were activated during the um, Donald Trump campaign um, in, since 2015, 2016, and during his uh, presidency, right? I, uh, I will say that every uh, cultural product um, in, in the public sphere, right? Every, every discourse, every message is a result of a certain political and socio-economical historical um, um, conditions, right? And so I will say, uh, or I will ask, right? If, if this is directly a response to those representations that were circulating uh, in the last years, right? Especially the last five years, very uh, have intensified you know, with, the, with the race of these uh, suprematory, super, supremacist, um, supremacist, racist, sexist, um, et cetera, um, discourses and how um, from, the, from, the, from a dominant power, from a dominant group, for, from, from those who are in power, um, differences, in this case, ethnical differences have been um, impulsed or have been intensified for like, like kind of a kind of a for protectionist reasons of the nation, right? Like for to keep the purity of the nation, and um, and well, um, when I when I when I watch when I was watching when I was writing to the material that I sent to uh, Cinema Tropical, um, I was um, getting more convinced about this um, hypothesis, but I don't know, right? So this is this is one of my. This is one of my, my, my questions for you, uh, or, or maybe, um, well, you know, it, does, it doesn't have, well, you are the authors, authors sorry, you may, you may say much more than others, um, but so, as, based on these observations, um, is, is, was this your idea? Sorry, am I, uh, are, Carlos, were you, no, everything fine? No, everything fine. I was just going to say probably it's, it's, it's more useful. Um, let's keep those two questions uh, for a bit later because I think it'll be more useful for the general audience. First, uh, Lindsay and Armando, how did you, you know, what in what context you moved to New York and how difficult it has been to make films? Uh, and then we can move uh, into into more specifically 
um, your films about the Mexican community, and then we can let's go from from the basic, and then and then we can go back to Luis's questions, which I think are, are kind of broader political context. So, how did you move to New York, and how 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 difficult has it been to make a, a film career here in the city? Uh, no. Thank you for and inviting us. Thank yes, you thank so much. you all. We are so honored to be part of this discussion, and we're super grateful to be here and connecting with everyone and uh, very happy to share our thoughts and yes and, and just what Lu Luis was was explaining and, and sort of putting in, in context I know we're going to talk about it later but it's super interesting I think uh, we filmmakers more like look very in the detail and it's it's very appreciated that uh, to have a, a wider you know more global political point of view so we're going to have a lot of fun talking about it uh, but uh, answering um, Carlos uh, first question well Lindsay and I we've been married for a long time now <laughs> and we moved together from Mexico I'm from Veracruz she's from Guadalajara uh, we were living in Veracruz and we decided to move to New York precisely because Lindsay wanted to study a, a master's degree at CUNY. So, so we did, she, she studied her MFA uh, at CUNY and, and I started writing scripts and, you know, um, shooting music videos, like wedding videos and, and uh, just videos in general. Uh, and that's when I, um, well, in my, my personal experience, got in touch with a, uh, uh, a beautiful Mexican community that was misrepresented uh, in all along, all the ways. Like I grew up in Mexico, not knowing about the beauty of the Mexican community, <clears throat> pretty much in the US, but specifically in New York. Um, so Lindsay and I, we got introduced to the Firmes, which is the first documentary we did. We, in, the, in the parade, like the, yeah, in the, the Mexican parade that the Institute always organizes. Um, there's a section where um, Mexicans uh, get together and um, feature their low rider cars. So it was like a very folkloric uh, approach because a friend of ours had met them and worked with them in a restaurant and and they they wanted uh, someone to document this event for them. Yeah, and we just were like uh, amazed by by the visual, you know, uh, and the culture, and you know, all these like representation of of Mexico and New York, and you know, this mix uh, sort of like culture. Chicano culture with Puebla culture with Guerrero culture. We were just amazed. Uh, uh, by all of that and we just started you know following them and just learning more about their life and their past and we, we, we it was like we just found like a like a source of material for for identity representation that had no limits really you know so that that was when we uh, decided it was clear to us that we want to dedicate our time in New York to represent this community that has been not forgotten, of course, but probably misrepresented, or, you know, like they will call these guys to make a, a hip hop video with the cars, or they will call these guys to be extras in a movie, or, you know, uh, so, so um, yeah, and we were not seeing the same story when we were uh, with them, you know, so that's, that's when our passion for, for, for this representation and just to start telling the stories the way we think they are and the way the characters, you know, we always collaborate with them. And so it's sort of like a, a way that we understand um, uh, what they are coming from and what they are looking for and how they live. And it's sort of like, just let the world know who, who they are, who we are, where we are, and that we are there in the streets, you know, next to each other. And sometimes you don't stop to think about Oh, where does Felipe lives, or how does does he, you know, uh, what what's what's what does he do for a living, you know? Um, and I think it's the same case with um, El Septimo Dia as well. That was the idea, and that's how, why Lindsay was brought into the project to look for that, uh, you know, sort of like, like um, um, a nuance in in the in the story to give a, a, a real, you know, um, a realness to, to, the, to the 
Great. Yeah, and it's it also uh, my personal experience. When I first arrived to New York, uh, I started working in a restaurant. I did um, a lot of like uh, years working uh, as a waitress, and all my coworkers were um, immigrants from Mexico, and um, th that uh, taught me something that I love so much about the city of New York that uh, in New York the social classes they disappear and you are one with everyone you are you in, in Mexico it's a very classist society and here it's very interesting because you can um, be at the same level earn the same money um, and sort of um, you you are able to relate uh, to the people that you meet that maybe come from small uh, farmer communities in Mexico and here um, you are working the, the same jobs and and that really really uh, taught us to a, a whole different uh, perspective of how to relate ourselves uh, with the Mexican community and and yeah and through through other friends I, I feel that we've created like this community also with Juan Carlos and Cynthia that they have a church um, in Sunset Park, and they've dedicated a lot of their time and their effort um, to support the Mexican community um, through um, uh, moments of, of very high stress, like in uh, Hurricane Sandy. And right now, um, they were very pandemic. supportive in, in the pandemic, uh, providing food to undocumented people. And I mean, they've been uh, great champions and and we uh, are big admirers and supporters of their work and thanks to them um, we also have uh, been able to approach the Mexican community that's actually how I I met Genoel because he used to dance in the in the basement uh, of the church and yeah so it's pretty much our work started from the beginning just linking uh, people linking stories and try to be as transparent and 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 to make justice, you know, and dignify all these stories that are, are have been unseen. So so that's that's sort of why we came, why why we are still here, you know. <laughs> we came originally to study, and we stayed because we we love the people. <laughs> And can you can you talk um, um, can you talk about your film? Uh, I'm living now. Um, how how did you meet your protagonist Felipe? How did that film came about? And and how did you uh, basically how you, how you made it? Uh, what was the process of making the film? Uh, I know it was a very challenging in many, in many different ways. So yes, you can just mm -hmm. so so we were going to the Bronx to 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 record uh, with the firmes, this ex-gang member, low rider club. Um, and we, we worked with them for several years. So we will commute, you know, from Brooklyn all the way to the Bronx uh, with the camera and sound. Uh, it was pretty intense. And either on our way there or on our, on our way back, we will see Felipe on the streets with his cart and mariachi hat singing. Uh, and we were always in a rush, but we always thought like, oh, we should just ask ask him what he's up to. He seems like a good character. Maybe we can do a short doc about Felipe. Uh, and we didn't stop him. He stopped us uh, because he saw we, we had the cameras and he asked us like, can you please record this song today? My uh, granddaughter uh, was born and I wanna send her a song. Can you please just record that, this song I'm gonna sing and then and you upload it to YouTube and send it to my family, just like a video letter, right? So we did, and then we, it, that was like a casting situation, you know? We immediately saw that he was special on the screen, that he had a presence. So um, uh, back in those days, we were trying to uh, experiment a little bit with uh, the, the narrative form, you know, like just sort of like trying to convey a story, not only with documentary and interview, just kind of like shying away from the uh, like traditional format of the documentary. And we saw an opportunity in Felipe to do so because he was very performative, right? So maybe, you know, we, we, we could start a collaboration together and sort of like do an experimental short. And that was actually Lindsay's thesis for CUNY, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this, yeah, this film. Um, and so, yeah, we, we saw Felipe and then, you know, he lived nearby and he will, he, he uh, picks bottles in the street. Mm -hmm. So he will ring our bell and we will bring bottles 
down every Tuesday and we will just start having conversations with him. And which is, which is kind of interesting now that we're talking about it. Uh, both of the films that we, both of our first films, uh, we came upon a group of people that was very eager and felt this necessity to tell their story. And for example, the firmes, they also ask us like, oh, we want someone to record our, uh, our parade and our cars and, our, and, and, uh, and also Felipe, I want to tell my family how I live in New York and, and I want to show them and and yeah we we sort of uh, saw that like as an opportunity to establish a relationship and a friendship with both of, of these uh, these different uh, people and 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 it was very interesting because both of them we made a video mm -hmm. um, you gave yeah. them the video in the in concert DVD, of, yeah. in the concert Cypress of Hill. Cypress Hill because they were like big fans of Cypress Hill and so it's also like this effort of like involve us involving ourselves in their culture and in their atmosphere and in their like social um, atmosphere, but at the same time also inviting them to to form part of, of our social atmosphere and, and our lives. So it's it's been like a, like a friendship relationship that goes uh, beyond just uh, recording you for for your story. Yes, so that's how the sort of like the films come about. We don't think that much like where they are gonna land, you know, in, in a bigger scope. Uh, but we hope that by doing something from the heart, you know, that uh, portrays uh, things the way they are and with, with a structured message, then they will sort of like communicate uh, further um, into, into other lands. Doing, like, like back in Mexico, we, we didn't expect the reaction that the film had, and it was like a very surprising and, and fulfilling, very well um, received. Very well received. Um, it yeah, was different it's... the way it was perceived in the US, you know, sort yeah. of like shifting into the more, more global. It was different how it was perceived in, in France, you know, and... and Yes, in but Mexico, in Mexico, it, uh, people identified a lot with the story because everybody has a relative that lives in, in, uh, in the United States, or everyone has a relative that decided to migrate. Um, uh, and 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 what impacted people the most in Mexico was that they didn't imagine how hard people work to to to, to send the money support back. their families back home. Um, how, how how they live and all that they have to sacrifice in order for their family members to to have a, a life in in Mexico mm. and yeah in the U.S. it was different because here it was more of like uh, noticing um, this culture and how this uh, Mexican culture contributes to the to the economy the economic well-being of of the United States and how it also contributes to the culture and and the space mm -hmm. so yeah it was different uh, different perspectives of how it touched and before we talk to Genoel, just uh, I find very interesting that you mirror or for me um um yeah my boy I'm living now it's 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 a good mirror to to an Aceptimo Dia, which uh, Lindsay you play a, a really cru crucial role in the making of a film uh, as a way also kind of bridging between the filmmaking team and and the Mexican community and that's um, the part that relates to Genoel. um can you tell us a little bit about your experience um uh, in making an Aceptimo Dia? yeah uh, me yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll start and then can I can mm -hmm. um, come in and also contribute uh, with mm -hmm. experience. You did it at the same time we were shooting Jamie Boy. Yeah. Jim McKay. Yeah. yeah and, and also it's, it's, <laughs> it's interesting that, you know, one is a documentary or nonfiction film, the other is fiction. So I think, it, in a way, they're interesting mirrors. Uh, um, they're yeah. going different ways, but, but, but trying to articulate this. Uh, Definitely, and I feel that we took a lot of um, a lot of what I learned from doing an El Septimo Dia and working with a film director that is uh, super sensible, like Jim McKay, that really takes from um, the documentary perspective to generate um, this fictional world, uh, and 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 yeah, it, it was uh, uh, such 
such a important opportunity in, in my career that I was not expecting at all. And it, it just, when I read the script and it involved the Mexican community and it involved, um, it involved soccer and this very poignant story about uh, uh, a young uh, man that, uh, that is a delivery worker and wants to bring his family home and and it's such a like a sweet it's a very sweet film of how Mexicans live and grow and prosper here and try to to survive and bring the best of themselves here in the United States so uh, for when I read the script I was totally um uh, I loved it from the very beginning and instantly I thought like Sunset Park I because I remember that uh, Jim McKay wanted to do it in the soccer fields of, of um, Red Hook, but as mm -hmm. I read the script, I was like, "Oh my God, this is like Sunset Park. This is this is a, a film that that should be filmed there in that community." And um, and I started introducing Jim McKay to Cynthia and Juan Carlos and the church, and and then of course Kenoel was uh, he was also there um, rehearsing in the in the church basement with his dance group, and and in and and Jim McKay always was very he wanted to sort of be part of the community. I mean, he still he, is. He 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 walks the talk, mm -hmm. uh, as you say it. You know, it, it wasn't mm -hmm. just that he wanted to do this uh, film. Uh, uh, represented by the Mexican community. No, he really involved himself. We went to carnivals and we also went to mole tastings and all <laughs> kinds of, of, of interesting like cultural events uh, related to Mexico that were happening. We also went to um, indigenous fairs. So him and I, we were just like every weekend, um, um, just uh, very, aware of, of all the events that involved Mexico and uh, traveling there, meeting people, talking to people. And um, at the very beginning, we wanted um, the cast to be played by football players. But of course, football players, they were just <laughs> interested in playing football. They weren't really interested in doing a film. So we, sl we slowly started catching up on that. And, and um, it was very interesting the the casting uh, because when we realized that that football players were not gonna give up their their sacred Sunday football games to be in a film, we decided to just walk the streets of the of Fifth <laughs> Avenue, but not in Manhattan, in Sunset Park. So we were just like walking <laughs> up and down Fifth Avenue with a camera and Javier also, Javier was part of that process, another uh, Mexican filmmaker friend that is also based in New York. So it was Javier, me, co-producer of Yame Boy. Co-producer of Yame Boy and co-producer of En El Septimo mm -hmm. Dia. So we were just like walking up and down Fifth Avenue with our cameras and interviewing people giving out flyers, talking to everyone about the film, making them aware of it, going into the panaderias and, and going to the park and, and just like hanging out there every, every weekend, every weekend and slowly uh, meeting the community and inviting everyone to to be part of this uh, very uh, special film. And in one of those uh, trips, we also met Genoel and he came to the castings and and yeah, it, it and the was, rest is it was, history. <laughs> it was a, such an <laughs> incredible experience. Genoel, how was it that you were involved the film? How did you get involved with the film? El contaba que tú bailabas en la iglesia, you, you dance in the, in, the, in, the, in the church? Sí, 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 bailé, bueno, danzo, sigo danzando, pero mm -hmm. eso no fue la razón, más bien este, yo vi es, eh, un post en Facebook de alguien que compartió y me dice, bueno, ahí está, dice, a ver quién, a ver quién este, tiene la suerte, dice, antes de que... Antes de que se hagan famosos, dice, me mandan un, este, un saludo cuando estén por allá. Eso fue lo que puso en su, en su, en su, en su publicación. Y como desde siempre me, ha, siempre me, me había gustado estar este, en, la, en la actuación, digo, desde la primaria, eh, 
nos hacían actuar, ¿no? Y, y había como algunas escenas que nos, nos este, que participábamos, ¿no? En las clases de artística. Y, pero bueno, ya eso pasó, pasó el tiempo y pues eventualmente dije, pues yo, yo quiero actuar antes de morirme, ¿no? Y dije, oh, ese es el momento. Y ya empecé como a buscar, ¿no? Y ya este, fuimos, yo mi familia y... y pues nada, pues uno, uno, uno ni en cuenta de lo que es un cast, yo no sabía ni qué es un casting, ¿no? Uh -huh. Ya pues, las cámaras enfrente de mí, entonces dije, <risa> esto sí es en serio, ¿no? Okay. Déjame introducirlo, déjame introducirlo. Uh, aquí I still dance, um, I saw a, um, a Facebook posting and that's how it came about. And the posting said, uh, said something about who's the lucky person uh, before becoming famous and send a greeting. Um, and I always liked acting since primary school. Uh, you know, I, I had that, that um, artistic uh, um, element in school. Uh, but um, but you know, years passed by, and I said I want to I want I want to act before I die. Uh, so I started looking for opportunities. And um, actually, I, you know, I didn't know um, anything about castings, uh, and I didn't know anything about the professional side of it. Mm -hmm. Sí, y ya después este llegamos al lugar. Y ya las cámaras bien, este, pues, eh, pilas, ¿no? Y preguntas y esto, el otro, ya, pues, pasaron los meses. Me llama alguien, este, este cuate, ¿cómo se llama? También de, ah, se me olvidó su nombre. Pero sí, sí, lo tengo en el teléfono. Javier. Javier, ajá. Y dice, hola, dice, ¿qué tal? Soy Javier. Dice, ¿te acuerdas? Y pues yo así como que pensé, pensé que era un scam, ¿no? Porque pues el teléfono era de otro lugar. Dice, pues, estás este, eh, contratado para la película. Entonces, no, go. Entonces dije, bueno, este, sí, entonces sí, y empezamos, ¿no? Y, y lo más chido de ahí fue que cuando yo, cuando yo supe que la película estaba en serio, es cuando Jim nos dio a todos 100 dólares para uh -huh. que compráramos este, tacos, zapatos, pues, de fútbol. Para, uh -huh. para, para entrenar en el invierno. Entonces dije, ¿quién te va a dar 100 dólares, no? Hacía lo güey. <risa> Perdón la palabra esa. ¿Puedo decir por qué? Uh -huh. este, <risa> eh, y ya pues aceptamos todos, ¿no? Y entre nosotros, los que estábamos ya en el ca ya en la producción, ya para, para actuar, nos, nos, nos secreteamos y nos decíamos, sí, sí, en serio, ya nos dio dinero. ¿Quién te va a dar 100 dólares, no? Uh -huh. y, y nada más le traigas el recibo. Ah. Okay. Um, so, so we got to the place uh, with the cameras and everything. We had questions, uh, and I did the casting. And months later, I mean, months passed by, and um, I I got a call back from um, Javier. And originally, I thought it was a scam because I didn't recognize the area code. Um, and you know, he told me that I was hired that I had I, I got the, the I got the job. And so we started, um, we started in the process and, and um, actually I knew it was serious. It was a serious uh, gig when Jim, the director gave us um, uh, each one of the cast members a hundred dollars. So we could, um, so we could buy um, uh, soccer shoes to train during winter. And so between, between the, between the members of the cast, we, we you know, we were talking and, and we knew it was, it was, a, 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 it was, it was, it was something serious. Uh -huh. Yes. The... Bueno, ahí continuó todo. Este, empezamos ya este, a... Bueno, Jim siempre se portó bien. Conocimos a, después a Eileen, si te conozco también ya en la onda, ¿no? Todo eso. Los demás, los demás cuates. Toda la, toda la profesión era genial. Fueron muy amigables. Yo no sé si todos son así. Es la primera vez, ¿no? Pero me, en lo personal me, me sentía yo como si fuéramos toda una familia. Entonces, este... Al final veo la película y pienso que, y siento la vibra de ahí. O sea, de todo, no nada más de los actores, sino que de todo, desde los, los que están ahí, este, de, de todo vaya. Toda la buena vibra, toda la buena, eh, la buena forma de, de humano que somos, ¿no? Eso es. So Jim was very nice, and that's where I met Lindsay, and um, yeah, all of the production was good. All the production team was great, very friendly, 
I don't know if all the production uh, the production crews are the same way, but uh, it really felt like a family. And um, watching the film, I really feel the the vibe um, from 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 the production, uh, the, the good vibe. Uh, um, I uh, I still had the the, the 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 human aspect of of it. Um, una pregunta más, Anuel. Um, cuando se estrena la película y, se, y agarra tanta atención, bueno, bien, ¿tú te imaginabas que la película iba a tomar tanta atención? Did you imagine the film would be, be, be so, so, so successful? Y, y, y en ese sentido, ¿qué tanto, te, qué tanto eh, cam, cambió o qué cambió en tu vida después de la película? Did, did something change in your life after the film? Bueno, este... Yo no me imaginé que la película fuera a ser tan, tan gran impacto en el mundo, porque sí se fue para Grecia y para todo Europa, bueno, partes de Europa y pues toda la parte de Sudamérica, eh, en Norteamérica también, este, Canadá. Yo, yo cuando estaba yo viendo las notificaciones de Jim, las, las, las publicaciones que hacía, yo me, se, me seguía como, sí me sorprendí, ¿no? Porque... Lo voy, a decir, lo voy a decir así como a la brava. Los mexicanos somos chingones, ¿no? Pero yo no me imaginaba hasta por allá tampoco. Entonces, este... Sí me dio muchísimo orgullo, ¿sabes? Me despertó muchísimo... Me, me despertó muchísimo... O más bien me alimentó mi orgullo de la... del esfuerzo que hacemos para estar aquí. Como... Como este... Inmigrantes, ¿no? como que vale la pena sentirse con orgullo porque sí nos damos una paliza, ¿no? Sobreviviendo en esos rumbos. Y eso lo digo entre todos, no nada más los mexicanos, sino que todos los que venimos aquí a sobrevivir a este país, a darle fuerza, somos, eh, somos corriosos, vaya. Este, y el cambio que dio en, la, en mi vida, pues, eh, ha sido de que de, de que de querer seguir en proyectos así, ¿no? Pero que también sean como que, va, que tengan como coherencia, que no sean como pues algo como así, no fantasioso o algo así. Y si lo hay, pues ya ni modo. Pero el punto acá <risa> mío es de que sí me abrió esa esa conciencia más profunda de que sí hay bastantes cosas que no las vemos eh, de muchas de muchas sociedades, ¿no? de alguna vez tuve una plática y esa pregunta me la hicieron también no sé en dónde pero después platiqué de ese, de ese tema con alguien y pues uno no sabe cómo viven los señores que venden fruta los señores de Bangladesh o sea no sabemos cuáles son sus vidas de ellos y, y ellos trabajan en el frío y como creo que como 15 horas al día entonces todo eso como que me fue abriendo conciencia vaya en ese aspecto. Okay, um, I'll try to be um, remember everything. Um, so I didn't know how I didn't know how impactful it was going to be because uh, it's green in Greece and different parts of Europe and South America and North America and Canada. So um, I I was surprised every time I got any notification from Jim because you know. Um, I'm, I'm going to be very blunt, uh, you know, uh, we Mexicans, we kicked ass, but I didn't know that we kicked ass so far. So I was really proud. Um, I was really proud because, uh, you know, the effort that we make to be here, uh, it's, 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 it's a lot. Uh, it's, it's a big struggle to be here and to, to give to this country. So um, what changed in my life is that I actually uh, opened that door that I want to continue working, um, working um, in this line uh, with coherent projects, um, not necessarily, not necessarily fantasy projects, uh, and also because um, I, I became conscious. It opened, um, this experience opened my eyes to to know that there's a lot of things that uh, we don't see that uh, we 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 don't see. Uh, we're not aware of it, um, like the fact that uh, you know we don't know how the the, the people from um, Bangladesh uh, that, that sell fruit that work who works 15, 15 hours a day, we don't know really, we don't really know how they live. So, so it became, uh, it made me conscious about these other realities. Mm -hmm. Perfecto, eh, gracias. Eh, should we go back to the questions that uh, Luis had posed uh, and that we took a little more, uh, so about kind of, um, kind, of the, kind of the global trends in terms of filmmaking, in terms of how you film in search to that. 
and but also how um, how the film also mirrors the political moment. Uh, and I guess both films came out in 2000, 2018, um, which you know it was it was the at the, at the case of the of the, of the previous uh, presidential, and the discourse was horrible. Well, Carlos, um, uh, before um, I, I uh, carry on on that uh, issue, I, I, because now that I've been uh, listening what um, what you are saying, um, Armando um, and uh, Lindsay, especially, you mentioned that you started this project as um, an experimentation, right? So I'm, I would like also to to know uh, then. And you also mentioned the word description. So I would like to know if you were. Uh, trying to come up with a, an accurate description of what you were observing around you. Um, that, that was your final intention, just uh, or, or you were really having a, a political uh, leitmotiv behind uh, your work. Um, I think, um, and we always describe the film as uh, not political without, uh, is not political, but has a political impact. So I, I completely understand uh, where you're coming from by saying that it's a political film, because of course it is, but the world, the, 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 there's no politics involved whatsoever in the film. It's a very uh, simple story that just um, speaks volumes about, you know, dignity and about hard work and about like good intentions and, um, you know, sacrifice and, uh, everything that comes with uh, the fact like of uh, anybody um, just migrating to a new country, to a new language, to a new culture, to, to give their best to the society and also to help um, their society back in their in their country. So I think that that's sort of like uh, the way we always saw it, like the, the political, the, the wider political impact will come from uh, the, the, the details in the story. Um, and then coming back to, to when we were experimenting and, and trying to, to make like a, a more like a description of, of the life here, uh, that was the, the intention in the beginning. Actually, like Lindsay's thesis had a more like that cut that she presented at CUNY had a more experimental sort of like approach uh, because, you know, the, all the performative side from Felipe and also because of the fact that uh, when we met him, and, and we talked uh, for, for long uh, what he wanted to do with the film, which was very important for us. He said he wanted to, the, the, he wanted the film to be a love letter to his son. You know, um, he left uh, Mexico when his son, uh, youngest son was one year old and they really didn't have any relationship um, until he, he came back. And, um, and he wanted to take the opportunity to express to him everything uh, that he went through in this country uh, so that he could understand why he left, you know, because there's a lot of like uh, uh, hard feelings about, you know, especially like a, like a father or like a like a, a important family figure that leaves you, you know, and then never comes back. And it's not, they, they sort of like have this like uh, abandonment feeling and for him was very heavy, you know, very, very heavy. So he really wanted to transmit this feeling to Cesar, um, his son. So uh, we, we uh, wanted to take the chance to um, uh, experiment on how most, most effectively portray this feeling, right? So films are, are not only about story, but are also about like feelings and emotions and uh, documentary um, no, it has a hard time transmitting that through interviews, you know? Uh, so we knew we wanted to do a films with no interviews. Uh, so then we um, started to ask Felipe what he wanted to do. So he will invite us to his life. Like, can you film this? Can you film that? which is not uh, the most traditional way to, to approach. Um, usually you, you go there with a plan, uh, but we, we sort of like follow his leads and with his leads, we were writing scenes that we wanted, that we, we felt we needed. Um, and then we, we tried to, to um, do that with him, 
but in the end, that's in Cuny's cut, but that didn't end up being in the in the in the in the in the film. Um, so it it began as a, as a more experimental process, but it ended up being uh, more uh, everything that we capture uh, we stole from reality from him, mixed with some planned out scenes that happen mostly when music comes in, which is more sort of like a filmmaker commentary on 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 how Felipe is feeling, you know? And, um, and then, well, we, we work along with a great writer, Josh Alexander, uh, which, you know, he's uh, like a teacher uh, for me. Uh, and we, we just had this very close uh, collaboration in which he helped us uh, realize what was the balance of these two um, different film uh, narrative approaches, you know? Um, and I can just say in the end that it, it's more like real life, 90% with yeah. some like a plan out sort of like a, a more planned out scenes, right? Of Felipe walking in Coney Island, Felipe feeling down, you know, Felipe just sort of like, but everything was coming from the original idea of writing a love letter, right? Which is how the film opens with a, a, the real letter that he wrote. This is great. Thank you very much for your answer. In one hand, you are telling me that yeah, by in the in the process of trying to give um, accuracy to the process of representation of the of other otherness and other subjects around the city, right? Um, what you are doing is just by by doing that, you are kind of giving justice, right? So you are kind of uh, giving, as you are saying, uh, dignity to to um, to the community, to the Latinx community, right? And so, yeah, um, I think uh, this experiment that you have done um, is, is a very uh, rich anthropological um, material for, um, for us to study. For that, that, I mean, I was fascinated when I watched it and I, and I think it's very valuable as a document per se, right? Um, and it's very interesting too for me to know that that was not your final invention, right? It's very, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think we came to it thinking like from a political perspective. We came to it thinking from what what is the life of Felipe? What are his struggles? How does he confront love? How does he confront loneliness? Uh, be, loneliness being far away from his family, um, is he is he hungry for love? Um, how 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 is he living? And, and through this very meticulous uh, description of his rhythm, of, of being involved in his rhythms and his day-to-day -day activity and really paying attention to the little details that uh, brought forth um, um, who he is as a human being uh, with emotions and, and, and we, we, this sort of uh, story surfaced for us in a way. So it wasn't, th this was one, one of the few projects um, that you go into and you sort of like start discovering the story through the interaction with your character. And, and I think that both uh, En El Septimo Dia and Ya Me Voy are, are films that, are that have a very highly political uh, content, but without talking about politics. Um, the same in El Septimo Dia, it's about these uh, friends and the how right they- The right to have a day to Yeah, it's free. about these friends and, and how they come together to support each other in work and outside work and and they become a community of support and how everyone has a right to have a day off of work to do what what they love to do and for these this group of of men it was to play soccer so that is very um that that has uh, a lot yeah, it's of a political, political statement, statement mm -hmm. which in, in that sense, I, I want to bring out something uh, which I found uh, in very interesting in both films. In uh, in uh, Jamie Boy, and, and, and literally, the, and the title uh, points to that, but also in Fernando's film, um, I'm no longer here. Um, I'm sorry, even uh, a bit of spoiler alert. Um, but both films, and in Mexico, kind of also challenging the idea that the future is in the U.S., kind of breaking the idea of the American dream. Um, I find also very powerful in both in both films that that do open this other that, that know that that 
as opposed to the, you know, all these narratives, not necessarily the future is in this country. Yes, definitely. You come here and you risk everything. You risk everything and you sacrifice everything. And for some people, the vast majority, they they get nothing in return because they don't have a social security number. They're not going to get any retirement. So it's like a lot of a lot of immigrants come and give the best years of their life to this country and make it the most productive and help it uh, rise economically and at the end all these people are left uh, with nothing with nothing well genoel ya tiene su socha that's, that's... <laughs> so uh... genoel uh, careful that you that you que querías Quieres seguir en este, quieres seguir actuando. ¿Te han salido algunas otras oportunidades? Uh, have you had any, any other opportunities you were talking about you want to continue in this, in this uh, career? Sí, sí, claro. Este, a lo mencionaba hace un rato, eh, como por a principios de marzo, a, por, ahí por marzo me comunicó este, un cast de Hulu para este, estar en unos episodios ¿no? de una temporada y pues me invitaron al cast, ya fui al casting, fui a hacer el casting y todo. Y ya pues dijeron, no, pues you're hired, ya. Digo, órale, pues qué bueno. Dice, vamos a empezar a rodar el, a fines de mayo. Digo, ok, pues está bien. Dice, va a ser como unas, este, como un mes, pero entre esos días va a haber como descansos, ¿no? Dice, si, si es posible que, que te den más de cinco episodios. Es posible que sean hasta diez episodios. Y claro, eh, siempre, o sea, siempre hay gente que ayuda, ¿no? Lindsay, muchas gracias, ¿no? Eh, eh, Alex y los demás cuates, ya todo estaba en orden, pero pues ya cuando era cosa de que me iban a pagar, pues este, me pidieron el número de social, ¿no? Y ya este, pues eso es donde frenó todo. Igual, pues eh, la producción de ellos y los que me estaban ayudando de este lado también como que enlazaron ideas para que pues aceleraran el proceso de que mandaran ese número para que así ya pudiéramos darle continuidad a este proyecto y pues no, 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 no pasó nada, vaya más que a que ellos tienen que avanzar y pues no, ni modo, ¿no? Eh, pero sí aguantaron hasta el último momento, ¿no? Hasta el último, el último día que, eh, o sea que, de, de, de estragos en, en, en tratar de, de conseguir ese número y pues nada más no se pudo y sentí que eh, era como no sé como de ambas partes era como esa esas ganas de que sí estuviéramos estuvieron ese, en ese proyecto no de mi parte también igual eh, fue muy decepcionante no porque es algo chido, ¿no? Es algo, es algo que pues, no me esperaba, pero también algo muy... Nueva experiencia, ¿no? Y... Bueno, vaya, se, ya pues se, se deshizo el proyecto. Yo, bueno, yo, a mí ya no me eh, dieron la, la oportunidad. Y pues precisamente hoy este, me dan el número de social, ¿no? Eh, entonces... Eh, pues nada, digo, van, van a llegar más, más oportunidades, ¿no? Entonces, eh, nada más, ahora sí que van a ser más fáciles. Y yo creo que mucha gente, como lo mencionan por ahí algunos este, de ustedes, de que sí, pues eh, venimos y trabajamos y, y, como dice el Donald Trump, que manda sus, sus, los peores, ¿no? Pero no, es lo contrario. Entonces, este, es, lo, es todo lo contrario y eh, pienso que, como dice el otro cuate aquí, este Luis Quesada, la parte política, yo creo que sí, o sea, la par, esa parte política de, de no de tomarnos en cuenta, pues sí, es decepcionante. Pero lo bueno que existen gente, pues así como los... Eh, los que hacen estos documentales o películas eh, que ayudan a que pues lleguen a los oídos de mucha gente, que, que sí sé que hay mucha gente que toma conciencia, ¿no? Y son el lente de, de poder más, ver más profundo y así pues a la vez quizás eh, 
tener una vida mejor, llevar una vida mejor como, como trabajador, ¿no? como buenas personas que somos. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, in March, I got a casting call from um, from Hulu for a television series. Um, and I went to the casting and they told me, you're hired. And I said, oh, great. Um, and they told me that the, the shooting would start at the end of uh, May during a month, but that there were going to be space uh, in between. They promised at least five episodes and probably up to 10. Um, so there's always uh, people that will lend you a hand and to thanks Lindsay and uh, thanks to Alex. But um, unfortunately, we hit a wall um, as I didn't have my social security number and in order to pay me. So they waited for me because um, the process was delayed and um, they waited for, for me um, as long as possible, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Uh, and I felt that there was good energy or uh, on both sides to, to make it happen uh, to be, so I could participate. But um, um, it was it was sad. Um, um, at the same time, it was something unexpected and it, and it was great that I got this, this call. And um, actually, uh, my social security number um, arrived um, in the mail today uh, and finally came through. So I'm sure more opportunities will come through and hopefully it will be easier. And um, as, as, as it was mentioned before, um, you know, it's really a struggle. And um, you know, Trump, President Trump had mentioned that Mexico sends its worst people. It's actually the opposite. Uh, and um, um, so it's, uh, it's really sad, uh, but uh, thankfully there's uh, people like filmmakers that um, are taking the message to other people and, uh, and, and making other people really conscious about it. Uh, um, uh, a lot, um, making, making, making a larger group of people uh, conscious about the message. And, uh, and so, we can, so we can carry um, our lives in a better way. Thank you. Luis, ¿quieres comentar algo? Sí. You wanted to say something, sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, so based on the, what you're saying, Kenoel, and, um, and, re and returning a little bit to the political aspect of uh, this, these two films that you, um, that we can say that the politica is more like implicit, is not like very, ex it's not very explicit, but right? it's kind of hidden. You have to, you have to interpret it, isn't it? Is, um, and so I would like to probably to propose this kind of representation of commonness, right? Like it's, it's like the, the life of the, the, the lives that you are portraying are so common, so ordinary, right? That this that, that what becomes extraordinary is the gesture of making them public, right? And and on the other hand, uh, on the seventh day, I would like to point to this um, agency because at the end of the movie. Uh, you could, you could uh, probably, you could think that this movie doesn't have any political, it's just a story about uh, some group of Mexicans that have been not assimilated, but integrated socially, uh, right? Because they are, they are still speaking Spanish and so on and so on. But um, we can see how they, at the end, can uh, exert some agency by the way they interact with the social structure in terms of how they react to the exploitation conditions conditions of labor that they are being subject to. So, so they kind of, and all the, all the group of um, guys are helping Jose to actually make it to the, to the, um, to the final, right? So it's, we can also see there uh, a micro power there, a micro uh, politics, if we start thinking in terms of agency, just, um, just wanted to add on that. No, I, I, I completely agree with, with that. And it's beautiful how you said it, that, you know, through showing a small story, uh, um, you, you sort of like uh, put light on issues that haven't been seen before, just, just, uh, just by showing it. Yeah, and also that that these characters that are being portrayed, as you say, they have agency. They're not passive. They're not. Uh, they are not just there letting life pass. They they are part of of this uh, social network uh, in New York specifically, 
and and how they have been able to create their own community and conserve and preserve their language and and their for example Genoel he he's part of a, a Aztec uh, dancing group and that's his way of expressing um, and remembering his culture that he brings from from Mexico and 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 in practicing his dance here in the United States is also like he's giving a present to the United States because he's showing um, this tradition that he knows from his ancestors and he's very uh, proud to uh, uh, portray it and exhibit it and the same um, as this these characters portrayed in in in, in El Septimo Dia and in um, in Llame Boy um, mm -hmm. they are a agents and they are creating this new culture here in the United States mm -hmm. we're running out of time but I just want to make a last question for Lindsay and Armando in terms of uh, uh, you know, the part of this uh, this um, series is also celebrating the Mexican talent in film in the city. So, in that sense, do you feel part of yourself of, of a larger uh, Mexican film community? Um, you know, I mentioned a few names at the beginning, uh, but uh, how do you see it? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Since since we arrived here, we we've been feeling a sense of camaraderie, and we we enjoy all the college, colleagues, and we. We share with all of them from gear to, you know, support to feedback, you know, we send scripts along, we, we team up in different ways, you know, uh, pretty much with all of the filmmakers that you mentioned in this panel. Um, we know each other. I'm a big fan of, of um, David uh, Riker, La Ciudad. That, it's a fantastic, phenomenal film. Um, I, I, I've been a fan since, I watch it. Uh, same Jim McKay, uh, Fernando Frias, we you know him as well, uh, pretty well. Jano Mejia, it's a very close friend and we see each other very often. Javier Velasco, who is is working on a, a lot of projects. And all the documentary colleagues. Eh? Sebastián Díaz. Díaz. Of course, I, I had dinner with him yesterday. <laughs> so yes, we we are a very tight uh, community, and we we help each other, and we are very proud of everybody's uh, work. And you know, we 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 feel be we belong to uh, um, a kind of wave that is happening in in the city uh, of New York, and and that is expanding. You know, like I I know everybody is busy, like Carlos mentioned. Um, we, we are busy too, and, and we just feel very lucky. Also, thanks to Carlos, I feel he's like the, the glue, you know, of, of all of us, because he's always connecting us, um, you know, if, if he's and supporting. And supporting us and, and talking about us and just linking, you know, like finding the, the similarities instead of like uh, the opposite, which uh, sadly, in Mexico, I see it happening a little more, more, more too often. But here, you know, um, we we like like Lindsay described, we we um, we see each other and we just want to support each other because uh, we are in a in a tough city, right? So uh, you have to 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 be there for for anything. So um, I, I I feel lucky uh, to to be welcome in in this community and and just. Uh, that inspires me uh, watching the other films um, and, and that's what keeps us really moving forward. Genoel, queremos ver, nos moremos de ganas de volverte a ver en la pantalla grande. We're looking forward to see you on the big screen. Uh, no sé si quieres decir alguna última cosa. Maybe you want to say some, any, anything else? No, pues este, que muchísimas gracias por este, esta de estar aquí platicando con ustedes me parece muy interesante que, que aparte de que sean eh, o sea, proyectos de películas, todo eso es también que los que vemos la, la, lo que vemos de la proyección lo, lo, lo sigamos plasmando, lo sigamos alimentando con ese tipo de reuniones ¿no? para que la gente nomás, la otra gente vea lo que, los puntos de vista de de uno, de uno mismo, eh, al igual escuchar a los que trabajan para hacer que esto se lleve a cabo, escuchar los, las experiencias, ¿no? Y pues nada, yo creo que todo esto es una parte educativa para la comunidad y 
también para motivar a los que están a punto de empezar, pero no lo hacen porque tienen miedo. Entonces, Carlos, pues muchas gracias a todos, igual, este, de muchas formas. Creo que hay que seguir alimentando estas, estas formas, ¿no? Um, thank you so much for the conversation. I find very interesting that beyond the film, uh, you know, the film itself themselves is also about the, the feeding, the, the cinema experience, so more people can see our stories and perspectives and also the people behind it. And it's also um, about educating, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an educated, educating process for the community as well as to motivate people to pursue um, a career, um, but to, 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 they don't, that they haven't done so because of, because of fear. And thank you so much. De nuevo, gracias, Genoel. Uh, Luis, anything else to finalize our conversation? Oh, just, uh, just to say thank you for the work that you have done, uh, um, the two of you, uh, and especially the work that you, Jose and Carlos, uh, are doing uh, within the New York uh, um, scene. Thank you, that, that will be all for my, thank you very much. Thank you. Lizzie and Chumpis, uh, 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 is your, uh, what's your next project? Uh, are you going to be working with, more with the Mexican community in your third feature film? Yes, well, yeah. Well, we are, <laughs> our next project, we are planning it in Mexico. So it's going to be a whole different uh, experience. Um, but we're still exploring um, the, the, our next project um, takes place in Veracruz, where Armando is from, and it's, um, it, it's a feature film. So this is our first uh, time, well, Armando, no, his second time, that we will um, adventure ourselves into this realm, um, taking very much from the experience of documentary, of course, and non-actors. Um, that we love to work that way and uh but this time we're turning the cameras towards us and it's a, a story of of um a young uh biologist that moves into a rural town and uh buys a piece of land and is eager to start a productive project uh but then she encounters all these obstacles um to to be able to develop her project um, in this uh, rural area in rural land in in Veracruz, so it's sort of like um, two worlds meeting and and uh, reacting to each other. Yeah, yeah, and how a, an idealistic woman sort of like uh, confronts <laughs> the reality of los ejidos, right? In Mexico, it's, it's a little more political this time. Um, because he's confronting the the history of you know um, communal land and how uh, her interpretation of of uh, the the uh, property sort of like clashes with the community interpretation of uh, communal work and um, although she has really good intentions uh, she's gonna create a, an environment in which a tragedy uh, will happen. So. We're working on that right now. <laughs> well, looking, looking forward to your new projects. I uh, want to invite everybody to watch these wonderful films. Um, you can watch at cinematropical.com. Um, you just have to register to, to get the links to watch them. And also Thursday, we're going to hear the other side. We're going to have uh, David Riker, uh, Jim McKay, and Alexis Gambis, uh, three non-Mexican directors who have depicted the Mexican community to hear their um, their uh, their perspective. Uh, and also want to thank again, Jose. Muchísimas gracias, Jose. Thank you so much for the partnership. Um, thank, you. Great thank you, Jose. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Luis. Thank you, Carlos, Pilar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, and, and I want to also remind all of our viewers to follow us on Facebook, Instagram. The Institute is at CUNY MSI, Mexican Studies Institute, and also Cinema Tropical. So you can see the whole series that we prepared with Cinema Tropical. So just check out the, uh, the website of Cinema Tropical and also our social media. Thank you, and a pleasure hearing you. Hi. Thank you. 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 Thank you